Urban Therapy with Sun Sun 752, and this is your daily go get em ism number 893. For, Feb mm. For March 14, 2017, tonight I want to talk to y'all about dealing with your exes. Yeah, that's right, dealing with your exes. And when I say your exes, I'm not talking about that man or that, that woman you used to deal with. I'm not talking about your ex girlfriend or boyfriend. I'm not talking about your ex spouse. Although, those are your exes as well. But when I say your exes, I'm talking about whoever or whatever you used to do in a past life. Whoever you were, whatever was associated with you in a past life, things that you don't do anymore, that you used to do on a regular basis. Those are your exes. So there are a lot of exes that are probably associated with, with a person. So you could be an ex-liar. You could be an ex-crackhead. You could be an ex-dope fiend. You could be an ex-thief. You could be an ex ex-bullshitter, you could be an ex-smoker, you could be an ex-drinker, ex-drunk, ex-alcoholic, you know what I mean, you could be an ex-bad boyfriend, you could be an ex-trifling girlfriend, you know, you could be an ex-abuser, you could be be a, a ex-angry person, an ex-depressed person, you could be a, a, a ex-trusting person, you know, it's not always negative. There's certain things that we may have done that were positive that we don't do anymore because of whatever reason. So you could be an ex-happy person. You could be an ex-optimistic person. An ex-optimist. There you go. You, of course, you could be an ex-pessimist as well. It all depends on your experiences and what made you transform from, from being in that state to what you were or whatever you were doing to where you are now. Not doing that anymore. So those are your exes. It can be. Uh, there are a lot of exes. That may be associated with you. But they're only truly an ex. If you don't do them anymore. If you still flirt around with certain things. If you still do things that you say that you don't do. But you actually do do. Then that's not really your ex. That means that your exes. Are really your current. So it's like you sneaking around with. An abusive lover that that you promised everybody that you wasn't messing around no more, messing around with no more. Y'all know what I'm talking about, you know. Let's say, let's say, yeah, what a, a lot of women experience this. They love a dude, you know, but he slap up every now and then. He damn near killed a, a a couple of times or whatever. He's very very abusive. But every time he beats her up or whatever, he comes back boo-hooing. Ah, oh my God, baby, I love you. I can't live without you. I swear to God, if you don't take me back this time, I'm going to kill myself. Blah, 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 whatever. And then you're embarrassed because everybody knows what he what he does to you or what he has done to you. And same thing on the, on the flip side with a man. Maybe you were dealing with a trifling-ass woman, a trifling-ass girlfriend or whatever. And, and she was always cheating on you, always leaving you for another dude, always comparing you to another dude, always fronting on you, always, you know, leaving you out there, always um, uh, uh, milking you for, for, for money, juicing you, you know, uh, humiliating you, calling you out of your name, uh, speaking ill of your manhood. Everybody knows that this girl ain't no good for you. Everybody knows she treats you like shit. But... You still find a way to worm your way back to her and hope that nobody has anything to say. But you know you're dead wrong for being with her. That's supposed to be your ex, but you still mess around with your ex. So your ex ain't your ex. Your ex is your current. But you're feeling bad about it the same way that you would feel bad if you promised everybody that you weren't going to drink anymore, or you weren't going to smoke anymore, or you or you were going to get clean off drugs, or that you weren't going to be abusive anymore, that you were going to um, show greater restraint, restraint and attend anger management, and you don't do any of these things, or maybe you only go for a little bit of time to show everybody that you're making progress, but then you go back to your old ways and, and keep doing what you were doing. So you're kind of embarrassed that your exes aren't really your exes, they're your current. And we go through this. We go through these things when we try to make something into our exes. We go through it. It's hard. When you're used to doing something, we're creatures of habit. So when we're used to doing something in a, in a certain kind of way, it gets hard not to do it in those kind of, in, in that way. It gets hard not to do it in that way. And even, even anatomically and physiologically, our body gets used to doing things at a certain time. And when we don't do it, we feel a little bit off. 
It's like people who need their morning coffee. It's not that the coffee is all that bad for them. Actually, it's not good for you. But, you know, we're not going to get into that right now. But for people who are used to that that morning jolt of coffee, they people will tell you that coffee doesn't even give them a caffeine um, high or anything like that. That's because they don't even recognize it anymore. They're so steeped in their addiction to the caffeine that they would have to have a really great big dose of caffeine to even feel it. But when they don't have that coffee in the morning or that tea in the morning or whatever, they feel funny. They feel off. They, they feel like they can't concentrate. They feel like, like uh, I don't know, jittery, nervous, whatever. They need that coffee. So, it's the same thing when, as when you're trying to wean yourself away from a person, an abusive lover or somebody that's just toxic for you. It's the same thing when you're trying to get off of, of, of alcohol. It's the same thing when you're trying to get off of drugs. It's the same thing when you're trying to stop lying. You just, you're trying to live a better life. It's the same thing when you're trying to get, build a relationship with God after you've been having the devil with you arm in arm. And y'all been chilling. They're like, they're like that's your right hand man. That's my right hand. This is the right for y'all. Look at You know what I'm saying? But seriously. But seriously. When you're trying to make something into your ex. Sometimes you need a, need a, you need a little help. And one thing that we don't do that we really should do. In order to make something an ex that needs to be our ex. Is we don't employ. We don't employ the help of people who will monitor us. See we want to be able to do it on our own. But when you want to do something on your own. You know what that's kind of like saying? That's kind of like saying, I don't want your help. Not only because you'll be able to take a little bit of credit for it, but if you help me, that means I won't be able to sneak back every now and then and have me a little taste or smoke me a little bit or smoke me a little bit or bang me a little bit or pop me a little bit. Or haul off and smack the shit out of somebody a little bit. Or yell at them and act crazy and get abusive a little bit. Or verbally abuse a motherfucker like he ain't shit, your bitch ass nigga, a little bit. See, we don't want people to be around to see us slipping, backsliding and all of that. But that's a normal thing to do when you're trying to make something your ex. And you can do it. So the things in life that you really don't do anymore, the things that you did in a previous life when you were different, when you were thinking different, when you were younger, when you were less mature, before you came into the knowledge, before before you crossed the threshold into making a definite, definitive change in your life, those things are your exes. But don't be afraid to make something your ex that you need to make an ex because that's what's up. When you know things are toxic to your to 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 your emotional health, your mental health, your physical health, they need to be in be your exes. They need to be in your rear view mirror. They need to be on a body. You don't need to be with them. And you know it. I know it. We know it. But we don't always follow our, our best instincts because life is a struggle and we be struggling. We be struggling, yo. We be struggling, but don't worry. Don't worry. Sometimes you have to do things a, a certain amount of times in order to get it right. But the last time is the only thing that matters. That last time. Because the last time is the last time before something becomes your ex. So get them exes out of your life. Stop lying. Stop cheating. Stop hurting people. Stop being abusive. Stop drinking. Stop smoking. Stop stop um, 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 uh, being on drugs. Stop allowing things to control you. Stop allowing yourself to be abused. There are other positive things that are our exes too, unfortunately. Like we can be an ex-happy person. We can be an ex-optimistic person. We can be an ex-trusting person. You know, because of our experiences with people who were negative and people who were toxic to us, they may have tur turned us into happy people, into trusting people, into... I mean, from, from happy and trusting people and optimistic people and ambitious people to people like, ah, nah, I'm good. I don't trust nobody no more. I've, I've, I've been hurt too many times. I've been burned too many times. I ain't messing with you no more. It's a struggle. We have a lot of exes. Now ask yourself, who are your exes? Who are your exes? Are your exes the bad things that used to be in your life? 
or are the exes the good things that used to be in your life? And do you need to get back with your ex? Because if the good things in your life are gone and they're your exes, you need to go contact your exes and, and get back with them. Schedule a meeting with them exes. Go have you know have dinner. You know go to movies. Have some you know have some fun. You know get intimate with your exes if they were good. But if your exes were bad, leave them motherfuckers in your rearview mirror and don't ever contact them again. And tell them don't ever tell them to lose your month your, your number. Don't come around where you live. Don't look don't look up look for you. Don't email you. Don't instant message you. Don't look for you on social media. Beat it. Yeah, it is. And that's that. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind. And anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours. And remember, we're talking about our exes. Ask yourself, who are your exes? Are your exes the negativity, the negativity that used to befall you? Or are your exes the good things that... That people who were negative got rid of for you. Did people make you break up with your exes that were good for you? Did bad people make you break up with your good exes? Ask yourself that. That's all I'm saying. And if if the bad people made you break up with your with your good exes, then go contact your good exes. You know, if your exes were freedom. If your if your exes were, were were positivity, if your exes were love, if your exes were trust, if your exes were were, were um, optimism and, and ambition, get with your exes. Have a menage a trois with your exes. Get them all in a room and have an orgy with your exes. But you make sure you get back with those exes. But all that smoking, drinking, all that all that all that uh you know abuse, being abused or or, or giving abuse. Or, um, in abusing your own self, physically and mentally, yeah, fuck them exes, nigga, get them niggas out of here, man, bye, man. Listen, the Urban Therapy with Sun Show is tomorrow night, the 15th of March, and tomorrow night we talk about being born with a, with a tarnished silver spoon in your mouth, a tarnished silver spoon in your mouth, so we're talking about people who have grown up in a household where there was plenty of money, but there wasn't any love, there wasn't any there wasn't any trust. There wasn't any optimism. There wasn't anything good going on. Does money make a family whole? Or do you need the other things, the other things in life to really, really get it popping with your family and make your family, uh, the family that you, uh, the family house a home? You know, there are plenty of people who went to private schools. There are plenty of people who, who were able to get all the material things that they wanted growing up, but they didn't have any love from their parents. They didn't have any attention from their parents. They didn't have any any re, any positive reinforcement from their parents. But the parents felt like as long as they were provide for their children, that they had everything they need. You feel that way? Well, we're going to talk about it tomorrow night on the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Call in number 319-527-6199. Hit us up. Blogtalkradio.com forward slash sun 752. That's Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace, y'all. Peace.